understand what firms have to do in respect of TCFD requires ploughing through and interpreting a significant amount of documents. In this briefing, I'm going to give you the key messages in 15 minutes. Firstly, there have been new TCFD reports and lots of relevant UK regulatory papers published in 2021. And I'm going to summarise these and explain who has to produce what and when. I will then run through our assessment of where life insurers were last year with their voluntary disclosures, where I expect them to be this year, and a straw man to compare against for good practice before providing you with a quick overview of how BW can help you on your TCFD journey. The TCFD was created in 2015 by the Financial Stability Board to design a set of recommendations for climate related financial risk disclosures. They have no regulatory powers and the goal was to provide a consistent framework for companies to use. It published its final report in 2017, although this was a considerable misnomer as it has published several additional reports since and we will look at these in a little while. Initially, these were adopted by companies on a voluntary basis only. But Rishi Sunak announced in November 2020 that the UK will become the first country in the world to make TCFD aligned disclosures fully mandatory across the economy by 2025. The main recommendations are set out in this table from the final report. There are 11 recommended disclosures that come under four key headings, governance, strategy, risk management and metrics and targets. The annex to the report provides guidance provided sorry the annex to the report provides guidance provided for specific sectors banks insurance companies asset owners and asset managers as well as guidance for all sectors the tcfd though are clear that they are not standard setters so this is set out as guidance there are currently five key documents as we said earlier the final report was issued in 2017 However, the most important document was actually the implementing guidance annex published alongside this. This contains most of the guidance and was updated in 2021. The key updates were, one, it removed the materiality get out option for scope one and scope two emissions. So these now have to be done by all. Lots of firms have made long-term pledges for say 2040, 2050. Now they're required to provide details of interim steps and targets to achieve this. And finally, you can't just state emission metrics. You have to state how this aligns with the scenario that allows temperature rises to stay below two degrees Celsius. The other three key documents are those giving guidance on scenario analysis, risk management integration and disclosure, and metrics, targets and transition plans. One area where a lot more work is probably needed is metrics and targets. Most firms produce only a limited number of metrics, if any, yet the TCFD sets out seven areas where it feels metrics would be useful. These are listed on this slide. In line with the annex updates, the 2021 report pushes the need to produce interim targets and quantified progress against these. Essentially, they're looking for people to disclose their current position, the potential impact of doing nothing, and the work being undertaken to mitigate these risks. As discussed, TCFD provides guidance only. Since the SUNAC announcement in November 2020, we have seen a flood of related regulatory papers and consultations to implement the ambition. The first two papers were published at the same time as the announcement and set out how firms were reporting along TCFD lines and set out a roadmap for how the goal of mandatory disclosures would be implemented. Last quarter was very busy in terms of papers. The company's regulations were issued in October 2021, which come into force for a counting period starting on or after April 2022 for listed firms and private firms with either, sorry, with both more than 500 employees and more than 500 million pound turnover. DP 21-4 was issued in November ahead of a consultation paper expected in Q2 2022. This is proposing expanding disclosures from climate to other sustainability factors for asset managers and certain FCA registered asset owners. PS2123 and PS2124 came in December after consultation papers in June. PS2123 requires enhanced climate related disclosures by all standard listed companies, whilst PS2124 requires enhanced climate related disclosure by large asset managers life insurers and FCA regulated pension providers. So who has to do what? 
Well, as with a lot of regulation, there is an element of a Venn diagram going on to determine who has to do what and when. All listed companies have to comply or explain on making TCFD disclosures for accounting periods beginning from 1st of January 2022. As stated earlier, TCFD reports set out recommendations and examples, so a number of the regulatory papers make clear statements on requirements. For example, PS2123 makes recommendations on the metrics to be used. Large asset managers, life insurers and FCA regulated pension providers have to publish entity and product reports by either 30th of June 23 or 30th of June 24, depending on their size. These set out metrics that have to be published, i.e. stronger than the recommendations for listed companies. Finally, all listed firms and private firms with more than 500 employees and more than 500 million pound turnover must produce a TCFD for accounting period starting after the 6th of April 2022. At the moment, the figures are not required to be audited. Um, also, the TCFD roadmap said that all other asset managers, life insurance and, and pension providers will be expected to be captured in 2023. But actually, PS 2124 stated that there is no mandatory requirements for smaller firms to do anything for three years, unless, of course, they're caught by the other Companies Act criteria. However, we expect most smaller life insurers and asset managers will want to make voluntary disclosures, even if they don't completely match the mandatory requirements for the larger firms. So one of the key risks around climate change is actually reputational risk and the impact that that may have on your customers. Last year, we carried out a review of 10 UK life companies, um, a mixture of FTSE 100, bulk annuity specialists and larger mutuals. We found that these were there was a very wide range of disclosures, including one firm that included no climate related disclosure. Two firms produced 37 pages of separate reports, and we saw a range in between. Um, a summary of these is, is, can be found in our blog uh, on our website, and that this is shown on the left hand side of this slide. 50% had uh, set goals, um, either an intent to support uh, the Paris Agreement or, or UK carbon neutrality targets by 2050. 60% disclosed some metrics um, on top of uh, emissions and carbon intensity, which all six disclosed. Other metrics included a climate VAR, uh, paper and water usage, waste amounts and percentage of green assets. However, as you can see, this is a lot less than, than the recommended list of, of seven, under seven headings. Risk framework disclosures had improved, um, but there was limited information on scenario modelling. A number mentioned gearing up to the 2021 Bank of England exploratory scenario exercise. So it'll be interesting to see what firms, those firms who, who participated show this year. So what am I expecting to see in 2021 disclosures? Um, there are no regulatory requirements for accounting periods ending on 31st of December 2021 but I'm expecting to see firms moving along the maturity arrow as they will want to show progress. I expect as a minimum a description of what is being done under each of the four main headings, and, and this is what a lot of the smaller firms did last year. I expect most firms to be nearing or achieving what I consider good practice, that is answering all 11 questions, including historic and current metrics, describing how climate change is considered in investment strategies, all, invest, all insurers are now required under SS319 to have embedded in climate change risk into their risk management. So as a minimum, this should be explained how this has been done. Those that are market leading will probably increase the range of their metrics, um, probably provide information on goals and interim milestones and provide descriptions of transition plans. I also expect scenario analysis results, especially for those who carried out the BES exercise. Clearly, those larger firms are caught by PS2124 will be gearing towards producing in line with those requirements. So just to expand on good practice, um, the majority of firms are still near the beginning of their TCFD journey. But for many, good practice can be achieved fairly easily by, by including the following. One, descriptions of, of the climate risks and opportunities that a company may face, whether from different assets changing values, potential changes in liabilities, operational risks such as office flooding or transition costs, or customer behaviour may be linked to economic conditions or, or, or reputational risks. Two, descriptions of how climate-related risks are managed and governed, 
in particular, a description of how SS319 requirements to embed climate change risks into risk frameworks have been met. Three, to produce some and provide some historical current and target metrics. I don't expect this to be a full range yet, um, but I think metrics in respect of assets held, e.g. Uh, carbon and intensities, and how these align to a two degree C scenario, and also operational carbon emission data for offices and home working and, and travel, both business and, and commuting. I think those are, are, are very achievable. Um, some simple tailored scenario modeling can be produced. Um, we've seen lots of complex models built in the market, but in our experience from looking to buy in such scenarios to use, there is as much heroic assumptions as science underlying the scenarios generated. And therefore we recommend as a first step using the scenarios used in the Bank of England CBEST exercises to generate stresses to apply to current balance sheets to quantify potential impacts. These can be easily tailored to specific risks held by the companies. Finally, these, these plus risk simulation workshops can be used to identify key risks, describe levels of resilience and identify needs for mitigation plans. Clearly, bigger firms may be looking to go further than this, and some firms may not be able to do this all in one step. We feel this is a good straw man to compare yourselves against and decide where you want to be. We hope it is useful. Dealing with sustainability issues is not a one-off challenge. It will be part of BAU for many years. We think that firms will need help with a range of issues over time and will want a partner that can help them through their, their sustainability journey. BW cares significantly about sustainability and is set up to provide a complete service and think holistically, not just about one cog in the wheel. So what could we do for clients now to help you? Um, we could undertake an SS319 risk embedded this gap analysis to ensure you're meeting this regulatory requirement and help you with the disclosures. We could help you collect the data and derive the assumptions required. We've done this for ourselves, for our business buildings and travel, both business and commuting. We're now starting to look at collecting data on suppliers. We also have data, research and ratings on many assets, investment managers and funds. We've developed scenarios based on the NGFS scenarios that underlie the BOE exploratory scenarios and can help with practical scenario modelling. For many, the investment transition or reputation risk will be the greatest risk. We can advise on investment strategies that fit your goals. We have seen that there is an increased focus on interim targets. These are not as easy to create and meet as long term goals as you will be assessed quicker on performance and will need to have strategies in place to achieve these. We can advise on setting ultimate and interim targets. Finally, we can help with communications, either internal or external through our, our specialist communications consultancy drum roll. 